Plato's allegory of the cave has influenced many cultures since its inception, 380 BC. The idea that there's a world beyond our own has always fascinated people, terrified people. If you're not familiar with this allegory, let me explain. It's very, very simple. The basic premise is that people are chained to a cave wall deep underground. Their bonds restrict them so that they can only stare at a wall and all they see are shadows thrown by torch out of their field of view. Over time, the people assign meaning to the shadows and argue about who knows the most about the shadows and what they mean. But at some point, they get out of their chains, turn around and realize that what they have seen was nothing but shadows, pictures created by the torch. So they do what every reasonable person would do. They start venerating the torch. The torch has been the source of their truth for so many years, so it must be the truth itself, right? Well, eventually they notice a crack and find an opening in a wall. They climb upwards painfully for hours, for days to reach the outside world. There they are confronted with another realization, things such as colors, living animals exist, and they are able to see all these things because of the sun, which they call the Grand Torch. In the sky. The story ends with a group of people, the men, the women, that were able to go outside the cave, see the grand torch in the sky, the sun, come back to the cave, return to the underground section of the cave and tell the people there, the people in chains there, what they saw outside. And if you've been using Scrum Agile for some years or even some months, you already know how the story ends. <laughs> some people <laughs> won't believe them. There's no way that there's a grand torch in the sky. Others won't even care. Some might even be afraid because the people returning to a cave have a hard time to see now because of this long exposure to sunlight. So we are scared people, people who don't care and people who don't believe. Only a few, a very small percentage of people would be interested in taking this risk, going out of their comfort zone to try reaching outside the cave. If you've been trying to implement Agile, the Scrum framework in your organization with your Scrum team, with some resistance, it might be because people are sitting in a cave, chained in a cave, mistaking shadows for truth. And the shadows, the shadows take many forms. Maybe the people in your team, in your scrum team, have been overworked for so many years that they don't even realize that they are overworked. But they are burned out constantly doing overtime, always chasing that deadline, believing that that's the only path, that's the truth. Shadows like being unmotivated, believing that you can't have passion in what you do. You can't be driven. All the things that are possible outside the cave, but they don't see it. They are inside the cave. They are only looking at the shadows, doing the same thing over and over again, not learning, not experimenting. Continuous improvement <laughs> is something that doesn't exist. Their processes, their tools, the way they build the product no, never improves. We don't experiment here because we might fail. And if we fail, our managers, the directors will punish us. Shame us. We won't get our bonuses. <laughs> Jokes aside, all these scenarios point to a single thing. It's always the same thing. People need to change. But there's this resistance that prevents them from changing or even prevents them from realizing that they need to change. It's hard to change. Going out of your comfort zone. But as a scrum master, you need to influence them to go towards this positive change. And this might be the thing that I say the most in my videos on this YouTube channel. You are not them. You might believe that using the Scrum framework is the thing that will make them build better products. Agility is the only way for you. It's the logical path. It just makes sense to use agility, the Scrum framework, and you can't understand why they don't see it. Again, you are not them. They are in a cave somewhere, looking at the shadows. There's no way that you can influence them from outside the cave. You need to go in the cave, in their section, put the chains on, understand their perspective, their point of view, join their world so that you can influence them. And you do that by always starting with what's in it for them. What will they gain from using the Scrum framework, from agility? And to know that, you need to ask them, 
Again, don't assume. You are not the one who is going to tell them what they want and how to get it. No, don't assume. Ask them, what do you want? And once you get a valid answer, because sometimes they won't even give you a valid answer because they don't know. Once you dig deeper and deeper, once you know what they want, what drives them, what will motivate them, then you can attach the Scrum framework or agility or any other frameworks or models or structures to this goal so that they can change, go out of their comfort zone. But again, don't assume, ask them. Remember the three pillars of Scrum. Transparency, making things visible, inspection and adaptation. And you can't adapt if you don't know what to adapt to. <laughs> if things are not transparent, if you're not inspecting, there's no way that people will adapt. Maybe the team, they are not meeting their stakeholders. I see that very often. Your managers, your directors, customers, you meet them maybe twice a year or even once a year when you're doing your evaluation to get your bonus. <laughs> Why not do a sprint review? But you can't just come and say, do a sprint review because we need to do it now. Tell them that doing the sprint review might get them more bonuses <laughs> simply because they will be meeting their stakeholders more often. They will know exactly what their stakeholders want from them. They will give their stakeholders continuous feedback throughout the year. And it greatly increases the chance of them meeting the expectation of their stakeholders simply because they are meeting them more often. That's how you influence people. You can't just come and say use the Scrum Framework because some managers or directors, they have told us we need to use the Scrum Framework. I like asking this question to people too, especially new Scrum Masters. What's the most important thing? in Scrum. The whole Scrum framework, the 14 pages of the Scrum Guide 2020, what's the most important thing? I would say the sprint goal. I would say the product goal. A bigger vision. That's what drives people. That's what motivates people. Once you get this huge vision, so powerful that people will naturally go towards this vision. 95% of the job is already done. You don't even need to show people how to work in teams, how to use the Scrum framework. They will naturally do it simply because there's such a big goal and they need the whole team to do it that they will naturally work together to go towards this goal. People are not driven, are not motivated simply because we are going into wrong directions <laughs> or we are going into directions that will not help the customer. We are wasting time. And the funny thing is the typical response I get when saying that to people, that you can have a drive, that you can be motivated, that you can be passionate when you come to work, excited to come to work every single day. I get always the same comment. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way a thing or anything can get me excited to come to work on a Monday morning. And if you think that, sorry to tell you, but you're looking at the shadows chained. <laughs> if someone can be obsessed with going to the gym, Something which is very painful. Eating healthy, taking back the control of their life, going out of their comfort zone. They can be obsessed with that. All these painful things. I'm sure that you can be obsessed with your work also. That you can find something that drives you. That's the goal. That's your goal as a Scrum Master. Unleashing the potential of your team members. They don't need you to tell them what to do. They are experts of their craft, but they need your help to coach them, mentor them, take them to this next level, make them realize that there's something outside their section of the cave. Make them realize that they are venerating shadows. It's not the truth, but it's a hard thing to do. It's going to take time. And if I were you, I would start with having a clear vision, a clear goal that they will craft together. You're just facilitating the session so that they can craft this one thing, this big hairy goal that will drive them. And the next thing you do is transparency. You start making things visible. Maybe they didn't even realize that planning was important. Why do planning? Why not just work? You make them realize that they were not doing planning. And because of this, maybe they are not being efficient, effective. They are not reaching their deadlines. And because of that, they are not getting their bonuses. Always link that to something that they want. <laughs> I know that it might sound obvious, but I need to mention that. Before preaching the Scrum Framework or Agility or any change, you need to have been outside the cave First, I see so many Scrum Masters, especially new Scrum Masters, preaching the Scrum Framework or Agility. Maybe they were a project manager in their previous life, following a rigid waterfall model 
Now they just became a scrum master and they need to preach the scrum framework. They don't believe in agility. They don't believe in the scrum framework. They don't believe in self-management. They believe in telling people what to do, micromanaging people. But we are now scrum masters and we need to preach the scrum framework. It will never work. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, it will never work because you don't believe. How can you sell something that you don't even believe in? Start with yourself first. Are you using the scrum framework or add your principles and values in your personal life? Not even work in your personal life. Do you do sprints? Do you do retros? Do you reflect on your goals? What you did in a week? Do you have sprint goals? Do you do reviews, sprint reviews? Why not? Why don't you do that? If it works, why can't you use that in your personal life? I'm sure that you have goals, right? Why not do sprints? I'm sure that you know how important retrospectives, reflection is, right? Three pillars of Scrum, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. It's important, right? Why don't you use that in your personal life? But don't worry, I got you covered. If you want more details on how to use agility in your personal life, watch this video right here. Another important component that I missed often when I was just starting out as a Scrum Master is ensuring, making sure that people can actually leave the cave. <laughs> Remember, they are in chains, venerating the shadows, the torch. Can they actually leave? Or oh, there's a manager, a leader somewhere, forcing them to always be chasing that deadline, to do overtime. They can't really pick a goal or a vision because someone else picked that for them, telling them what features to build. If that's true, it's a waste of time revealing or helping them see the truth outside the cave when they will always be stuck in the cave. It might be even more damaging to do that because you're showing them a life that they will never be able to reach, a better life that they will never be able to reach. So start with asking them what's preventing you, any impediments, anything preventing you from actually changing. And if there is, work on that in priority. Don't underestimate this section. At the end of the day, we are professionals. We want to go into the right direction, or at least most of us, the scrum team, the managers, the directors, but some of us will never have the courage to do it. Which brings me to my next point. If you want more tips, insights on Agile Scrum personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now, and I'll see you in a few seconds.